Аллилуйя, Аллилуйя. Господь будет прославлен. Аллилуйя. Мы хотим, чтобы Ты прославился, Иисус. Аллилуйя. Ты святой Господь. Аллилуйя. Аллилуйя, Аллилуйя. Holy, holy, holy. Аллилуйя. I worship you. Аллилуйя, Аллилуйя, Аллилуйя. Аллилуйя, 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 Аллилуйя. Аллилуйя, 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 Аллилуйя. I worship, I worship you. Я славлю тебя, Господь. О, holy. Мы славим тебя, Иисус. Вокруг его стояли серафимы, у каждого из них по шести крыльев. Двумя закрывали каждое лицо свое, и двумя закрывали ноги свои, и двумя летали. И взывали они друг к другу, и говорили, «Свят, свят, свят, Господь Бог Саваоу, и вся земля полна славы Господней». Слава Тебе, Господи! Твоя земля вся полна славы, Твоя Иисус! Мы поклоняемся лишь Тебе, Иисус, потому что Ты достоин. Ты наш Творец неба и земли, Иисус. Хвала Тебе, Иисус. Ты достоин принять славу, честь и силу, ибо Ты сотворил все. И все по Твоей воле существует и сотворено, Господь. Твоя рука не сократилась сегодня, Господь. 
Господи, и ухани отяжелело. Мы уповаем на Тебя, Господи. Помоги нам быть, как Ты, Господи, потому что Ты сказал, я свят. Будьте святы, потому что я свят, Иисус. Изменяй наши сердца, изменяй наше мышление, Иисус. Чтобы мы были, как Ты, Иисус. Чтобы мы любили, как Ты служили друг другу, Иисус. О, слава Тебе, Иисус, слава Тебе, Иисус. Нет подобных Тебе, Господь. Ты свят, Иисус. Помоги нам быть святым, Иисус. Изменяй нас, Господь Иисус. Прошу Тебя, Иисус. Благослови, Господь, мы нуждаемся в Тебе. Изменяй нас, Господи, наполняй нас своим присутствием. Излей свою силу, Иисус. Потому что все, что нужно в нашей жизни, это Ты, Иисус. Ты есть путь истина и жизнь, Ты есть смысл жизни, Господь. И этот мир ничто не даст нам, что Ты нам дал, Господь Иисус. Хвала Тебе, Сан, Аллилуйя. Слава Тебе, Иисус. Мы поклоняемся лишь Тебе. Мы любим Тебя, Иисус. Слава Тебе, Иисус. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Um, I've been privileged with the um, with um, asking you guys to uh, help out the youth tonight. We're going to do a um, an offering tonight, and um, it is it is the youth wants to start, um, or I guess I should say the youth and the young adults want to start um, going out on the streets and doing some ministry to um, homeless and 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 less fortunate people than ourselves. And so we're going to take a, an offering for the youth. Um, Bogdan wanted me to say a few words. I used to go downtown Portland, and we would um, um, hand out soup to people and um, sandwiches, maybe a jacket or something. But one of the things that, that the people always loved if we had them, they loved socks. And if we would bring socks, so that's one thing that we're talking about, just going out and getting some socks and maybe some, like, cup of noodles And that way we could just take the hot water and, and pour it in there. And um, so we'll have the, some hot soup. We'll have some socks. But more importantly, that'll open the door for us to share the gospel and tell them about Yeshua. So, um, so that's what we're, we're asking tonight is, is uh, for the Lord's glory that we can get out there and spread the word. Because, you know, he says be doers of the word, not just hearers. So we're not just going to always praise him in here, but we've got to take it out there and And praise him. So, so we're going to sing a song. And um, which one are we singing? Oh, Hallelujah to Adonai. A great song. So stand up and then we're going to.
Присаживайтесь. All right, all right. Hallelujah. Well, I just want to introduce myself real quick. My name is Philip, and um, I go to Rehoboth uh, Messianic Congregation over in Vancouver, and that is where uh, I connected with Bogdan. He plays there on Friday nights. He does the praise and worship there, and we uh, practice at his house every now and then on Thursday nights, and, um, and so he's like, come on, Phil, come up here and uh, help me with this. So, and uh, while we're there, we, we talk and have a good time, and I tell him stories about stuff that's happening in my life, and, and then he's like, hey, you should, you should tell some of these stories. So I have a, um, a little story, but first I want to um, open up the word. Um, to 1 Corinthians. Um, at, at my house, I have a house in Vancouver, and at my house, um, we kind of, it's a bunch of guys, and we all keep each other accountable, and we all want to live holy unto the Lord. And uh, one verse that, that I try to live by, it's really hard to do, by the way, um, it says... Um, in chapter chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians, um, verse 11, I'll start there. It says, no, what I wrote to you was not to associate with anyone who is supposed, supposedly a brother, but engages in sexual immorality, in greedy, worships idols, is abusive, gets drunk, or steals, which person you shouldn't eat. So right there, it's talking about, he's not talking about people in the world that, that do these things, but people in your own household, in your own family that are accountable to God. And, and sometimes in our lives, it's hard if we have a brother or a sister in the Lord, it's hard to, to confront them on sin. Um, and so I had a little situation where um, I had a, had a friend and he was, um, he had left left the house for a while to go stay at another friend's house to um, um, meet with a girl. And he had said that this, this person was um, a Christian and everything. So we had it all, all set. But he just kind of slipped right out and, and went to this other house. And we didn't see him for two weeks. And so when he came back, we were all kind of like, oh, hey, good to see you, good to see you. And, uh, and there was just kind of like this some unfinished business in the back of the and this, this little unfinished business anyways. And, and so, um, so I got bold and I said, hey, I just need to know if we can eat with you, you know, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 5 um, uh, verse 11, it says that if you've done anything bad with this girl, then, um, then uh, I can't eat with you. And he's like, he's like, man, it's all good. It's good. I'm good. And, um, and I'm kind of like, all right. So I, I let it go then. And and a few weeks went by, and we hadn't eaten any meals together. And, and Passover was coming up, and I was having a bunch of people over at my house. And, um, and I was like, hey, tonight I really need to know. I need to know something. And, uh, and he had just told me that he's, he's like, you know what, I'm moving out. I don't have any privacy and, and all this stuff. And I was like, well, tonight we're having a special dinner, Passover, and I need to know because um, you're going to be here and eat with us. I just kind of need to know if if you've done anything. And he was like, that's, that's it. That's why I'm moving out. No privacy. I'm out of here. And I was like, well, we, I still need to know if you've been, um, how's everything been? And uh, he, he just got madder and madder. And then finally, he, uh, he said, yes, I did. I did. I committed sin with her. And he, and he, starts, getting, and he starts getting even madder. And then um, I started breaking out some scriptures. And I showed him this scripture here and a couple other scriptures. And, and I thought he was just going to get mad and run out the door and uh, be mad at me and not be my friend anymore. But um, and then this, the atmosphere kind of changed. And all of a sudden, he just, he just stopped and bowed his head. And he just he started crying. And he said, and he turned to me and, and he said, you know what? He said, thank you for, for being a brother. Thank you for holding the line because I was going to go and move in with this girl and, and do this stuff that, uh, that I should never do. And, uh, and he started repenting. He said, I've done, I'm not going to get into it, but he said, yes, I've done this sin and this sin. And I was even drinking to cover up the pain. And, um, and he just, he, he wept for like a half an hour. And, and we, we hugged after that. And, 
And, and, and now we can have fellowship because he repented, not just he asked for our forgiveness, but he repented to the Lord. And so, so the, 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 the video clip we're going to watch tonight is, is on holiness. And what was that? Oh, okay, okay. Um, the, cl- the clip tonight is on holiness. And, uh, um, and so, um, so like, like in my house, I want to keep a high standard of holiness, not just, not my standard, but just the Lord's standard. And, and one last thing that I was, that I was telling him is he said, it's, it's so weird because not even my own father has, has asked me that. Not, not even my own father would say, you know, um, what are you doing with that girl or whatever? Um, and so, um, I told him basically that, that we're, we have a whole new culture that the Lord's trying to take us into. And, and he's, he was over here in the world and the Lord is like pulling us out of, out of the world. The, you know, like he pulled him out of Egypt and gave him, he took him out in the wilderness and gave him a culture. Um, and that's what he's doing to us and some of our friends that are in the world. And we got to remember that we're, we got to pull them out of that junk and, and put them in, into the Lord's um, kingdom, into his culture, which is, is the Passover, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread that we're doing right now, but also being holy. So here's a clip that we have um, that's kind of about what we're trying to pull people out of. I'm not troubled in my heart about your self-esteem. I'm not troubled in my heart about whether or not you feel good about yourself, whether or not life is turning out like you want it to turn out, or whether or not your checkbook is balanced. There's only one thing that gave me a sleepless night. There's only one thing that troubled me all throughout the morning. 